Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together with the people of God on the first day of the week. To begin the week, we pick with ourselves to do the work of God. To begin the week in mutual support of one another, the body of Christ, the church. This is Christ the King Sunday. We come to worship Him in all power, His power and majesty. We affirm our duty to obey His commands and to serve Him as our Lord and Master. We renew our resolve to build His kingdom on this earth for His glory and His honor. All praise the mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is We Gather Together, number 131. Let's stand and sing. <laughs> We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now see, he's from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us our God. We 
affirm the faith we profess with the Apostles' Creed, as found on page 881 of the hymnal. Let us join in this historic confession of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> Let us go before the throne of grace with a prayer of confession found on page 12 of the hymn. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven people, let us greet each other with signs of reconciliation. Okay. The uh, next hymn is on the uh, back of your hymnal. It's uh, forever. Let's stand and sing. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good. He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise.
parable of the uh, wise man who built his house upon the rock and the foolish man who built their house upon the sand. And uh, Jesus tells this parable, and the way he starts it out, he says, uh, he says, if you hear and do what I say, you're wise. If you hear and do and don't do what I say, then you're foolish. The parable is, of course, we all know it, that the, uh, the wise man builds his house upon the rock and the storms come and the rains bash down on it and it stands because it's built on the rock. It's built on God's word. That the, and the foolish man, he builds his house upon the sand. He doesn't build on that firm foundation that God has for us. And so when the tar tar hard times come, it's unable to withstand the storm because, after all, it's just built on sand, that shifting sand. But like I said, what the, the, the point that Jesus is making in this parable, the way he puts it out is you have to do what he says. The, the commands are there to build that foundation, to, to build that, 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 that moral uh, uh, foundation for you to live your life, to have a consistent, that, that love of God to instill within it. Just don't be hearers of the word. Do it as well. Go out there and, and be the people that God creates you to be. The reason that he wants you to do that is because that's how you're going to be happy. That's how you're going to live a better life. That's how you're going to live the blessings that God has for you. Now, the silly song is the story, and it's put in a song. And, uh, wise man built his house upon the rock. Wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. we return some of the goods and the resources that God has entrusted to us for the mission and ministry of this, uh, this church where we now have this nice new sidewalk. Thank you for your generous donations. Let us build that. It's going to help uh, especially uh, Diane get uh, around the, the campus and, uh, to, to the ramp over there. So, uh, let's pray. Almighty God, giver of all good and perfect gifts, we thank you for the blessing upon blessing you lavish so generously upon us. Give us generous hearts, that the resources you've given us may be used to build your kingdom upon this earth. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye, all ye lands. Serve the Lord, the Lord with gladness. Come unto His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is our God. It is He who hath made us. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. 
bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord. For He comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, Save us, God our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to Your holy name and glory in Your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. <clears throat> and today's New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 17. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This, of course, is the week of Thanksgiving. That's on Thursday. And it's good that we set aside a day to... Praise God and thank Him for all the gifts. I hope you have an enjoyable time with your family and eat lots of food. And how's your Thanksgiving? About five pounds. Anyway, <laughs> it's a, it is a time of rejoicing. My freshman year of college, I applied for a, a summer job at a place called Philmont. It's a, a, a scout camp in northern New Mexico. It's actually the largest youth camp in the world. And uh, at a uh, it's, uh, they have host about 40,000 uh, scouts a year from around the world at, uh, to camp. And it's, uh, it's not like where you wear hair badges. You, you hike and, and do activities as you're hiking through the mountains. It's 214 square miles. So large camp. I'd gone to film on as a camper when I was in high school. I thought it would be a great place to spend my summer. Well, you know, scouting was always a big part of my life. I was the Eagle Scout. I'd been in uh, all seven years uh, the, the program uh, from the time I was 11 to the time I graduated high school. I had held all kinds of offices, all these kind of badges and awards and things like that. So uh, I was uh, I was kind of thinking about myself as kind of a super scout, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of arrogant. And, uh, and uh, there's a reason for why young and foolish go together. And uh, uh, I, I applied, and, th and I applied for some of the, you know, prestigious top level jobs, you know, things like that. And uh, despite the fact that I had never worked in the summer camp before. And so when I got to the, the, uh, the offer back, it was for food service. <laughs> like, food service? <laughs> I'm better than that. Don't they know who they're talking to? I'm offended. I almost turned it down. I almost turned it down. But I, I didn't because I, I really didn't want to uh, spend the summer back at home in El Paso. So I uh, begrudgingly uh, trudged off to go uh, sling hash and sweep floors and wash dishes. About halfway through the season, uh, Philmont had this uh, job satisfaction survey. And the day that we received the survey, and I was supposed to fill it out, my assignment was to sweep the dining hall. And it was, it was, it was a rather large room. It's, it was, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you've been in the cafeteria at uh, 
at the Junction High School that's about three times that size. Um, so that was my assignment. Dad was supposed to take the chairs, put them on top of the table, or wipe down the tables, and take the chairs, put them on top of the tables, and sweep the floor and mop the floor, and then put everything back for the dinner shift. And so I put the, uh, the uh, survey on the table, and I read the, the question, I went and did some cleaning, and I came back and I answered that question. So I had a lot of time to think about each question as I was going through. Uh, over the, this, because you know, it takes a while to sweep a big item like that. And um, I, I got down to the last question on the survey, and the last question on the survey was very simple. It was, are you happy? That was it, just, are you I was like, well, that's kind of an esoteric question for a job satisfaction survey. But I mean, after all, it's in the Boy Scouts, it's a charity, it's a camp, it's in the yeah, okay, fine, I'll, I'll answer it. So I went back and I started sweeping. And I started thinking about it. And as begrudgingly as I came, I was here in this beautiful place. I mean, it's in the back of the Rocky Mountains, and you can see outside of these pine covered uh, mountains, and the, every once in a while the jagged uh, gray of uh, granite outcroppings and the, the flowers that the, the, the dotted you could, the, the patches of color with the white columbines and the purple of the sage and the red Indian paintbrushes. The air was clean and fresh and at nighttime you could see every star in the sky uh, and all the, and the, the mountain shooting stars. It's amazing you, when you have a really clear sky like you do out here. The number of shooting stars you can see. And uh, I, was, I was living in a tent uh, I was only allowed to bring my backpack, and so I, I, they had these old uh, metal uh, uh, hospital cots with the springs. I don't know if you ever remember those. And my sleeping bag with a mat mattress on top of it, and it all has a few toilets. You've got three changes of clothes. I wasn't being paid much, but I there was no place to spend it out there. I mean, it's kind of a squirrel or something, you know. So, uh, I just setting it back to my bank account at home, that was all I was doing with it. And, you know, I had a room back at home with a whole bunch of stuff, but I didn't miss it. I wasn't using it, it was kind of there. And the people I was working with, I liked them. They were friendly, they were they were from all over the world. Like this, like I said, it's the largest scout camp in the world. And so, I mean, people from Canada and Britain and Japan. And in all kinds of places. And I got along with them. And you know, the great thing about working food service is you know, you sweep the floor, you, you serve the fact, and when you're done, you're done. When I was in college, I didn't have any homework, I didn't have to worry about projects, I didn't have anything like that. It was just, I had people I could enjoy time with and, 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 and being off. We weren't, there was no uh, news out there. You couldn't hear anything that was going on. And so I was getting into that day. Because, because our news is so cheerful. <laughs> but there was nothing for, I built politics, no economics, nothing. The only, the only thing was, I was working with a girl from Canada, she was on the crew, and she wanted to see the wedding of Prince Charles and, and Lady Diana. That was the only thing we ever got, this was 1981. So that was, that was the, only, the only news that we got all summer. So was I happy? Very. Yes, I was. And no one's more surprised at an answer than I was. That, that I was truly happy. It's one of those life lessons that it always hurt. You know, everyone's ever tells you that it, it, you know that it's it, that it's something that I had to experience to truly believe. That some people call it head knowledge versus heart knowledge. I know now that God placed me in that situation because I needed to learn that lesson. I needed, God needed me to learn that all that he's given me is all that I really need. And that life is not that complicated. I needed to experience the joy of being thankful for what I have and not worry about what I don't. The world tries to scare us. Fear has always been a great motivator used by the tyrants to maintain their power, whether it's fear of the Jews or blacks or Native Americans or whatever group that we want to scapegoat. Advertisers play upon our fear of losing social status or falling behind, what used to be called keeping up with the Joneses, to sell their products. I had a phrase that I used to use with youth a lot. 
I'm old, I don't have to be cool. <laughs> and, and, and I'm getting really tired of every election and hearing that this, that democracy itself is all about it. Getting kind of tired of that. Paul tells Timothy, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-control. The spirit of fear turns us inward toward ourselves. We start worrying about us and me, and, and it becomes our own little world. We fret about what's going to happen to us. We become paranoid that some imaginary boogeyman is plotting out to get us. We end up spending our time building walls to protect us and cut ourselves off from those who God calls for us to love. The spirit of love turns outwards, towards others. It's out of love that we truly see each other as children of God, that we truly see each other. Uh, they're, they're just like us. All our strengths and weaknesses, everybody else is just as messed up as I am. All those insecurities and fears. The spirit of love enables us to see that everyone else is just doing their best to do their best in the messiness of this life. The spirit of love frees us from the doubts, the suspicion, and lets us see the good in others and the good they do for us. And when we see what they do for us, the spirit of love instills within us an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of thanks. The spirit of thankfulness gives us humility. We realize that others have gifts and talents that we don't have, but we need. Paul wrote to the Corinthians this long analogy that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to, to read sometimes. It's, it, it talks about the, the body of Christ and the, the, the analogy of having different body parts. And we need to rely on each other. The eyes, the ears, the hands have different functions. And each of us has, has those things to, we do as well and those things that we're just not really that good at. But we depend on each other. One of my standard jokes that I tell them, dad jokes, one of my dad jokes that I tell the kids is, that if Albert Einstein failed math and Carl Sandburg failed English, I should be the greatest organic chemist of all time. <laughs> But uh, one of the great things about when I went back and get my master's degree, go back into, into uh, uh, the seminary, I didn't have to take chemistry ever again. <laughs> am I thankful that there are people that are good at chemistry? Yes, of course I am. It's the chemists that develop those medicines that, make our, that, that prolong our life and give us a better quality of life. It's the chemist that designs those materials that, that make our, our life improve our quality and give us those good things. It's chemists that mix the fuels that we need to power our industry and power our homes and give us warmth in the winter and power our world. We need chemists. We need each other. I need the gifts that God gave you. I need to contribute to God the gifts that God gave me. The spirit of thankfulness is not just appreciation for what you have for others, but to appreciate the gifts that God gave you. You have something to contribute. You are part of creation, and creation is not complete without you. You do make a difference in the love that you show, in the investment of your time, your resources, your prayers, and the witness that you bear of what God has done for you. So go out and share it. Thankfulness for what I have is giving, is giving me the motivation to do my best, to do my duty as a disciple. In the parable of the wise and foolish uh, builders, Jesus says that everyone who does, who hears his word and does them will be like the wise man. I'm thankful that I'm able to preach, that I'm able to sing. Not well, but I'm able to do it. <laughs> to drive for Meals and Wheels, to participate in the London, the London gig or the, uh, or the or Junction cast. I'm thankful for the, the opportunity to be productive. And there's great satisfaction in being able to, to just do my part. One of the stories that we read about in the Bible is Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. <clears throat> now, the story is it's very early in Mark. The first chapter, Mark, the first 29 verses into Mark, they, they, you read into the story. Jesus has just called Peter and Andrew and James and John. He goes to the synagogue, he preaches, he heals a, 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 a demoniac that's, that, that's there, and he goes over to Peter's house. Peter invites him over to his house. Now, I've actually been when I traveled to Israel to, to Capernaum. The, the synagogue is still there, or the ruins of the synagogue are there, and the ruins of Peter's house are still there, and they're only about 50 yards apart. And so, and so he goes into this house, 
And Peter's mother-in-law is sick, and he told him Peter's mother-in-law is sick. And what the 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 uh, uh, Bible tells us that uh, Peter, Jesus goes over to where she's laying sick, and he put, takes her by the hand and lifts her up, and then immediately she goes and starts serving them. Now I've heard criticism of this parable a lot of times that, that Jesus, okay, yeah, get yeah, her up, hey, we need we need to eat, we're hungry. That's not it. That's not what's happening. That's what she does. That's how she participates. That's how she contributes to the good of the world. I had an aunt, Aunt Jess, from my mother's side of the family. And she would, whenever I, me and my brother showed up, she would, she would start cooking. Because that's what she did. She fed us. That's, that's what her role, she fed us. Have you ever had a 15-year-old tell you, no more, I'm <laughs> Boy, she, she fed us and fed us. And that was what she did. It's how she participated. God gave you some way that you participate in this world. And he wants you to use those talents, use those gifts. I'm thank the thankful spirit is a generous spirit. The thankful spirit is willing to share of yourself the blessings that you've received. The thankful spirit knows and recognizes that grace that you have been given. That untainted love that's not really yours, but extended to God, by God, who is greater, wiser, and more powerful than you are. God is sufficient into himself. He doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't really need our praises, but, but he needs nothing from his creation. We have the life and life abundant because God has, doesn't, because not because God has anything to do, but because out of his unfathomable love, it's not something he has to do, but he loves us. He chose to give it to us, even dying on a cross for the salvation of even the souls of those people who are driving the nails. Our gratitude for what he has given us, how can we do anything other than to share that with others? The thankful spirit revels in all that God has provided us. It is present. It's a present spirit here and now, in this moment, immersed in this moment, savoring the present right now, we are in this room with people who, are, who love God and are struggling to be who God calls us to be. The person sitting next to you knows that uh, God's command to love and sincerely wants to do just that. Right now you're among friends that want you to be healthy, happy, prosperous, and successful. In fact, and when we know people that weren't able to make it this morning, that we, that we still want them to, we, we want to see good happen to them as well. And the, the thankful spirit is here and now, at this moment, we're at peace with one another. We're safe in the company of the communion of saints. When we have what we need, we enjoy this moment. This is God's house, His sanctuary, in the truest sense of the word. A place of safety, protection, against whatever forces out there that wish to harm us. Most of all, the thankful spirit is a joyful spirit. God desires us to revel in all the, the, the goodness He's given us, in the rain and the cold and the, in, in, in the uh, living together in peace, sharing our lives. He desires for us to enjoy life and that life abundant that's already given us. Life is not only good, but very good. And we are here to enjoy. Is there suffering, of course? Are those that are in need? Yes, we know that. But God has lavished upon us the resources we need to alleviate that suffering, to build up those who have fallen, and to bring the good news of great joy to a world that desperately needs revival. We have been given the gift of opportunity to go and make disciples of all nations, to bring the joy of salvation to souls that are lost and have been led astray. We've been given the opportunity by our Lord and Master to make a difference as we go out from this place and build His kingdom for His glory and for His honor. Thanks be to God. Our song of reflection is Fill My Cup, Lord. <coughs> Number uh, 641, you may remain seated as we prepare to go before the throne of grace and prayer. <laughs> Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, fill my cup, fill it Almighty God, 
God, we thank you for the blessing upon blessing you lavish so generously upon us. We thank you for the rains that you sent to refresh the earth. We thank you for this upcoming holiday that allows us to spend time with, your, with our families and our friends to enjoy the bounty of all the good things that you've created, the food and the, with its flavors and the savory aromas. We thank you for companionship and family. We ask for safe travels for all those who are going wherever they are and they may safely reach their destination. They may enjoy the company they find there and return home safely, refreshed, to continue to build your kingdom. We thank you for those things that we don't even realize that you've given us, those things we don't even think about that are out of mind, and yet you in your, in your wisdom and your, your power and your strength and your, your, your omnipotence have given us a tiny little detail that make our life good. We thank you especially for your son, Jesus Christ, our example, uh, who taught us your word, who lived out how we can live, and showed us that it's possible to live that perfect life. We thank you for the gift of forgiveness to pick us up and dust us off when we've gone astray, when our stubborn hearts have turned away and done things, tried to do things <coughs> our way, and we finally realize that doesn't Open our ears to hear your word. Give us strong hands and strong and swift feet to go wherever you send us, ears to hear your word and voice and lips to speak the words that you place in our mouth, words of love and comfort and peace to bring wholeness and healing. Almighty God, we thank you for all that we have and, and more than we have, more than enough, the bounty, the, 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 the surplus, Help us to be generous, give us generous hearts that we may share that surplus so that others may, may know the, the, the comfort and security and, and be alleviate, especially in this time of economic crisis and economic turmoil. Those that have not are feeling the, 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 the pinch and, 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 and the sh sort of shadow that hangs over their lives. Give us the opportunity to, to give them moments of peace and moments of comfort and moments of joy. Clear, help uh, clear the minds of those who are lost and used to clear the anxiety, knowing that through it all you are with them. For those that are suffering from, from physical illness, from those that are hurting, from those that, that uh, are facing uh, treatments and, and, uh, and surgeries, and those that are still recovering from past surgeries, we ask your healing touch, O great physician, that they find comfort in their body and peace and stillness in their soul. That your blessed assurance that through it all you are still there. We thank you for those people that are spending their lives to, to serve and, to, and to, to, place, to, to put love into real practical action. Those that keep our utilities going, our roads open, those that are on the front lines of, of, of uh, facing the, the threats from outside, our military, our first responders, our law enforcement, our EMS units, our fire departments, those that are in the hospitals and, and take care of us, those that are in schools to teach us truth and enlighten young minds. Almighty God, we, we thank you for all the blessings and the people that you've given us. We Give us hearts of love, hearts of compassion. Give us an understanding and a forgiving heart for those times when we're just not at our best. And we need to realize that other people may have bad days as well. For all this and all the blessings, we thank you and worship you and praise you, Almighty Father especially for the gift of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Well, I'd like to, first of all, thank uh, those that worked on the, on the uh, sidewalk. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Jim uh, Ports did a lot of work on it, and uh, I think you were here, too, <laughs> so working on it. And, uh, it it's, it's, a, it's a great help, especially, like I said, for Diane, that uh, she can have a good amount. Almighty God, we thank you for servants who are willing to take care of you know, the, the physical property and the, the labor that they put in. Bless the work of their hands. We thank you for this opportunity to 
to build something that will make life easier for those who worship here. You must have a joy or celebration they'd like to share or a concern that they'd like to bring up before the body of Christ. Left. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Alan Terrell. He lost his wife, Becky, this past week after battle cancer. Almighty God, we lift up Alan Terrell and the Terrell family at this time of loss. Uh, we, we pray that uh, you accept her into your arms, a sheep of your own fold, a, a sinner of your own redeemed. Give the uh, comfort and peace to this family, knowing that uh, she is in your hands, knowing that... Uh, uh, as we come up on the holiday season, we know that the loss will be felt deeply. There will be an empty place at the table. We ask that your comfort and, and, and that your love be with them, that your presence be with them at that table. We ask in your name. Amen. I have a joy and right. my son Asa was in a triathlon yesterday in all of that horrible weather. <laughs> and uh, he won, but I mean, just to give thanks that everything turned out okay, and he was safe, and everybody else was safe as well. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of sport, the flesh competition that builds character and strength and endurance. We thank you for a successful uh, competition that, and, and the victory that, that you blessed him with. Uh, be with him as he continues to grow and, and in strength. We thank you for the safety that was provided for all the, the uh, the athletes that the uh, can be asking you make. Yesterday, one of my nephews got married, um, so I would ask prayers for Trey and Linda. I say to give her a gift. Almighty God, we, we, we thank you for the gift of each other, the, 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 the love that's shared in the family. We, we thank you for, for Trey and Linda. Bless their marriage. Give them years of prosperity and joy but mostly love. Make them a strong family, a faithful family. They raise children that are that are uh, uh, faithful disciples of you now and forever. Thanks for the rain and the winter weeds and grass and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the rains that you sent to, to, to refresh the earth. We thank you for the life that it will bring. We thank you for the, for the, for the continued rain that this land is so desperately needed. We ask you to fill up our, our, our rivers and aquifers and, and, and restore the, what was lost over this, uh, this summer during the, the hot and dry season. We ask for your continued blessing. Uh, you know that this land can always use more rain. Okay. Uh, no gig this week because everybody's... Uh, Monday. New Monday. New Monday. We're making chains for the party. Oh, yes. Yes, we are. Yes. Uh, yes, but unfortunately, the date is not on the insert. It's December 10th. 10th. December 10th. I will, I will, I will have Becky correct that so the next week we have a date actually okay. the thing. I, I've been voluntold I play music for your day, so <laughs> so oh well that, that, that's, that, that's fine oh, it's in the bulletin also it's in the bulletin yeah. also but, oh, it's in the I remind you that Advent begins next week it's the summer season uh, that is Christmas season as we prepare for the, the birth of Jesus Christ uh, also, according to the liturgical calendar, it is the new year, the new liturgical year. So, uh, happy new year next week. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful uh, time. Hope you won't have Bible study Wednesday night either. Okay, so no Bible study. Okay. Back for Thanksgiving. Yeah, a lot of people will probably be on the road. Okay. So, everything. I just want to thank you for your sermon this morning. This is really happy. Well, ain't me, it's the boss. Tell your boss. All right. Tell the boss. You can tell him yourself. I'm glad you listened. All right. Thank you for the day. Praise God for you. It's a lot of good spots. All right. All right. Anything else? Our closing hymn is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
number 557. I had not realized that we had not sung this the entire time I've been here. So let's stand and sing. Blessed be the time that bonds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we